You, you're finally awake. You know the drill. Beheading, dragon, jump out the window. I asked this old lady if she needed help. She didn't answer me, so I took it as a no. I sided with the Imperials because I'm a dark elf. I chose a dark elf for the purple skin and option of solid black eyes, which I felt worked with the undead theme. I also named her the Necro Army, so I feel more like a collective while playing. I took the mage robes and hood off the dead prisoner in the torturer's chamber because the hood gives you extra magicka, but I wouldn't be wearing it for long so it doesn't really matter. I let Hadvar deal with all the enemies as I ran through the caves, finally escaping into Skyrim. Then I started making my way to Riverwood, stopping to accept the mage stone to boost the speed at which I learned magic. When I reached Riverwood, I spoke to Alvor to sell him all the gear I had picked up off the Stormcloaks. Once I ran out of things to sell him, I used the click, drag, press E method to sell him his own inventory until he ran out of money. This can also be cheese to raise your speech skill, but I won't be needing that. After that, I started walking east of White Run to reach the Ritual Stone. I got a mug crab to follow me, hoping something might kill it along the way and I could make it my first follower. Instead, I got to witness it murder a wolf with a single snip. Normally, you run into a random ambush, like wolves or bandits along this road, but luckily for me, Talscar the Wandering Bard killed them for me. Those dead bandits would soon be my first victims to have their souls ripped from Sovngarde and join the Necro army. I obtained the power of the Ritual Stone and got the Necromancer lurking behind it to follow me. I led him back to Talscar and the dead bandits and used my new power to create the first of many undead hordes. They rose slowly as their souls reconvened with their meat and immediately set off to destroy my enemies. Or enemy, just the one. They killed him quickly, so I waited 24 hours before casting the power to raise them again altogether. See, the ritual stone is interesting. Like necromancy spells, it lets you raise the dead for a short amount of time, but you can only use it once per day. However, your undead followers don't turn to ash when the time runs out the way they would with a conjuration spell. Their bodies just fall to the floor ready to be raised again. This means you can wait 24 hours to recharge your ritual stone power and continuously raise the same dead body for as long as you want. We can exploit this later, but first we need to further the plot. I took my new friends on a field trip to Whiterun and spoke to Jarl Balgriff about the dragon menace. He had me talk to Faringar, the court wizard, who told me to go to Bleak Falls Barrow. I left Dragon's Reach to find my friends had died and took the opportunity to fast travel. Your undead followers won't come with you when you fast travel because more time has passed than they can be raised for, meaning they would immediately die when you reach your destination, so they just get left behind. I could have just walked from White Run to Riverwood and waited 24 hours as needed, but fuck that. I'll find something to resurrect along the way. Without my zombies to protect me, I ran from everything on the way up to Bleak Falls Barrow, and luckily I found some new dead friends to join the collective. An adventurer and a couple of skeevers killed the bandits inside before I reached Big Mama the Spider Queen. Unfortunately, right as they started attacking her, all my followers died as their time ran out. This could become a problem in the future. This time, because the spider is confined to her little boss chamber, I was able to back up to an earlier part of the dungeon and crouch in a corner until she couldn't detect me anymore. After I was out of sight, out of mind, I waited again and recharged my power. After waiting, I picked up a sword and dragged my bandit to the spider chamber and dropped the sword again. Your undead companions will pick up weapons from the floor if they're unarmed, which is pretty handy. I also accidentally raised a skeleton who glided into the room on his heelys. After sitting back and watching someone else kill the spider, I cut down Arvel the Taylor Swift and watched the dumbass run right into a room full of Draugr. They killed him quickly, and once my army had dispatched the Draugr, Arvel joined the hive mind as well. The Draugr in the next room proved more difficult, killing all my companions and giving me no opportunity to run and wait, so I had to use traps to my advantage. This worked well, but I'd rather not have to put myself in danger like that again. We'll have to find a way around not being able to wait in combat. I made it through the rest of the Draugr unscathed. My army followed me through load doors, which wasn't an issue, thankfully. I lost a few along the way to timely and untimely death, but as I made it to the doors to the ward wall room, I realized I never looted the Golden Claw off of Arvel, and had to go back and find his dead body somewhere in the ruins. I got the claw, made a mental note not to resurrect before looting, and entered the Draugr Lord's chambers. The fight was easy, since I had about six followers all attacking him at once. I got the stone and returned to Farangar just in time to hear about a dragon attacking the Western Watchtower. 
Before I could deal with that, it was time to get a new accessory. I marked a location on my map vaguely close to my destination, a dwarven ruin. Outside Whiterun, I saw the necromancer I had resurrected laying on the ground and briefly considered walking all the way to Markarth just so I could keep him. But I decided that was too much work and just hired the carriage instead. He took me to Markarth and I headed toward my marker. I got a random encounter I have never gotten before of kids telling me about a bridge, ignored it, and eventually ended up at Arkhangathams, the first of many Dwemer ruins to come. This is when things got spooky. I heard a voice, some might call it a ghostly voice, telling me to turn back, and sure enough it was a ghost. She told me about Ethereum shards and how they were the Dwemer's greatest treasure, and I vowed to find them. I raised a Falmer, but he didn't help much. I think he was instantly killed by the first Dwemer spider we came across, so I just ran past the rest of the Falmer. They won't chase you into the final area, so I wouldn't have to worry about them. I made it to the kinetic resonators, looted a bow and a hint off a dead guy, didn't mess up the combination, and found my first piece of ethereum. Only three more to go. Sometimes with this quest, map markers won't show up to tell you where the next ruins are, so I had to look up a map and mark them myself. The first shard was a ways north of Riften, so I hired a carriage to take me there. Because I was teleporting all over the map for these next few minutes, I didn't bother bringing any undead with me, so this section became a without attacking anything run. I got to the ruin, unlocked the gate, and took my second ethereum shard. Next stop, west of Windhelm. I stole a horse from the stables to get me there faster, which actually helped me later on. I took the horse into the mountains and entered the ruin. Inside I found a bandit who I roasted alive and then resurrected to join my fight. He was greatly outnumbered and didn't even prove that good of a distraction, so I hurried along without him. All the Dwemer shit came after me, from spheres to spiders, but I was able to kill them with the convenient spinning blade traps. It's just a shame I couldn't bring them back to life to join me. After the Dwemer always comes the Falmer, and they managed to slow me down with their ice spells long enough to kill me. I finally got away from them alive and entered the room with the big gears and a bridge, and had a hell of a time trying to remember which gears had bones stuck in them, completely forgetting that you had to press a button to drop the bridge. I remembered, entered the next room, and let Katria deal with the machines while I stole the Ethereum. My last destination was Deep Folk Crossing, which didn't have any enemies or dead things for me to resurrect. I took the shard, Katria told me where to meet her, and I set off. I found her fighting some bandits at Bethalft and hopped around for a while while she killed them. Before we could go into the ruins though, I needed some extra help. From doing a test playthrough of this run, I knew I wouldn't be able to wait 24 hours in the forge room, so I wouldn't be able to resurrect my bandits between waves. That left Katria to deal damage to multiple enemies and a boss, which wouldn't be enough damage. I traveled to White Run and hired Janassa. Now you may be thinking this is cheating since she is an undead, but as long as I dismiss her before the fight, she will no longer be fighting for me, but for herself, so none of her kills count as mine. She is also a protected NPC, meaning she can be downed in a fight but not killed, unless I deliver the final blow so I can heal her during the fight to keep her standing. Before leaving Whiterun, I stopped by Barangars to buy a healing hand spell so I could heal Janassa and Katria while they fought the Forge Master for me. The first wave of the fight was just Dwemer spiders, and the second wave threw in some Dwemer spheres. Janassa had some trouble, but Katria took most of them down without any help. All my undead bandits died at the beginning of the second wave. When the final boss fight began, it took the Forge Master a while to find us, but when he did, he downed Janassa in two hits. He can use a fire breath and a fireball attack, as well as melee attacks. You can also take burning damage from being too close to him, so it's good to have a follower who uses a bow like Feindel. I thought when I started this run that I would fail the challenge at this point. I thought, like Alduin, the Forge Master could only be killed by a hit from the player, but I was wrong. And while trying to get a good angle to watch the fight, I completely missed the shot of the Forge Master dying. Now the part that is going to make this whole playthrough less tedious and more fun. I walked up to the forge, inserted the shards, and created the ethereal crown. The crown has an armor rating of zero, so it's no better than my novice hood in that regard, but the crown has a special effect. It holds the power of the previous standing stone you had selected, meaning you can have two standing stone powers at once. How is this useful to us? Well, each time you take off the crown, it removes the power attached to it from your powers menu. When you put the crown back on, it returns the power as if you were receiving it for the first time. This makes the game think you haven't used the power yet, so you can cast it, remove the crown, and cast it again. This gets rid of the 24-hour limitation. 
After finally getting the crown, I immediately forgot about the next step, taking a second standing stone ability, and went to fight the dragon at the western watchtower. Luckily for me, Irolith can't die, so she dealt all the damage. I absorbed the dragon's soul, found out I'm something called the Dragonborn, and traveled to the Standing Stones to accept the Mage Stone again. Now to test the exploit. I walked to Riverwood from the stones because I know you get attacked by a wolf or two, and if you can get them to follow you to Riverwood, the guards will kill the wolves, giving me some fresh corpses to raise. I returned the claw to Lucan before leaving to tell Balgriff that I can eat dragon spirits. I heard the Greybeards yell, awkwardly watched an argument, and left again to climb the seven million steps. I fast traveled to Bethalft because it was my closest discovered location to Iverstead. Along the way I found a bear and brought him to meet my guard friends in Iverstead. They didn't like each other, but that's okay because I just brought the bear back to life and had him kill another bear. My two bears and some accidental bandits followed me up the steps. I watched them kill numerous things and took advantage of the ethereal crown to resurrect everything I could. The one problem with the ritual stone is the time limit. There is no way in the vanilla game to get around that. If you're not paying attention, your followers can run out of time at different intervals, meaning some get left behind while others keep following you. This is how I lost my bandits and bears on the mountain. They really would have been useful for fighting the frost troll because he took out my wolves in one hit. Frost trolls can heal so quickly that it wasn't worth it to constantly raise my wolves, so I just ran. I finally made it to High Hrothgar and tried to use unrelenting force without aiming at the graybeards, but unfortunately you have to hit them with it. Since this doesn't aggro them and it's necessary to complete the main quest, I'm giving myself a pass. I killed some ghosts, learned whirlwind sprint, and got sent on a mission to find a horn. I took a carriage to Morthal and walked to the crypt where I found some bandits waiting for me. I left to buy a fury spell because I needed them to attack each other in order for me to have something to resurrect. However, I wish I hadn't done this because there was a dead body right outside the door that I could have brought back to life. I promised myself I wouldn't use the fury spell again and didn't for the rest of the playthrough. In the crypt I found a lot of enemies and a lot of things to resurrect, which led to me having a fully fledged armada by behind me. I felt so powerful, so evil, and this was unfortunately the last time I had an army of this size. After finding the note left by Delphine, I went to meet her in Riverwood. When I got there, I found cultists waiting to kill me, so I let the guards deal with them. But not before they managed to kill Alvor and his wife. I cleaved their souls back to their bodies so they could live out one last adventure. I couldn't let them rest in peace. What kind of friend would that make me? I also brought the cultists with me. Since I had already been to Windhelm in my quest for Ethereum, I thought long and hard about just fast traveling there and taking the short walk to Kynesgrove. But I wanted to take advantage of having those cultists, so I walked all the way from Riverwood. And I lost almost everyone along the way, including Alvor and his wife. They will be missed. Remember when I stole that horse? Well, Windhelm does. Just when I was running low on undead, a guard came up to me and asked me to pay a fine. I said no, he met my friends, and we all became best buds. I reached Kynesgrove, fought the dragon, it didn't take long, and I went back to Riverwood. There I saw Dorothy, and she was pretty bummed. Turns out her parents died. Who were her parents? Alvor and Sigrid. Whoops. I actually felt so bad that I took the time to get almost 7,000 gold so I could buy a house, furnish it, and adopt her. After that distraction, I went to Solitude, entered the Thalmor Embassy, and ran from everything. Unfortunately, you can't just open the trap door once you get the information you were after. You have to loot the key off one of the guards. It took me so long to kill all of them because they are so much stronger than Melbourne's corpse. Finally, I managed to kill the right guard and escape using the key. I heard about Esbern, found him in the Ratway, listened to him blab about dragons, and headed to Karthspire. I ran past everyone while they fought the dragon, completed a puzzle, gave myself a boo-boo, and read Alduin's Wall. I left to see the Greybeards, they yelled at me, I asked about Dragonrend, they sent me to Parthenax, and once again I had to use a shout on someone to progress the story. He told me about the Elder Scroll and I set off to the College of Winterhold to ask around. I found the information I wanted in a book written by a crazy person, which sent me to the frozen waters of the north to find Septimus. He rambled insanely, and I barely understood where I had to go next. Another Dwemer ruin. I made it there without trouble, finding a few dead wolves along the way, and watched a fugitive and his assailant duke it out. They all joined my party, and we entered the ruins together in search of Blackreach. I died for a second time inside the ruins as I tried to jump down a giant pit. Not sure why I thought that would work. So instead, I ran through Falmer-infested ruins while avoiding everything I could. I found a few dead things to help me, but most of them were too weak to kill the Falmer. I got Sula and Amana 
to kill each other, and they joined the collective. They weren't much help as I just ran through Blackreach as fast as I could. I entered the Tower of Mazark, pressed the buttons, and got my Elder Scroll. I left and had my followers attack a giant, which I was surprised they managed to kill, so I brought him along for the ride for a while. Unfortunately, he was too slow to keep up most of the time. Before I could go to the Throat of the World, I needed more followers. On my way to Iverstead to kill people, I lost most of my undead to a vicious mug crab attack. It was tragic. So in Iverstead, I used the Fury spell again, like I said I wouldn't, to get the guards angry at me, and led them to the bear cave at the base of the mountain. They all died, including the bear, so I brought him back to life to fight against Alduin. I made it to the top of the mountain with all my guards, but not the bear, and read the scroll. It was trippy, I was surprised I didn't see any guards glitching in and out of the scene, and the fight with Alduin began. You can't deal any damage against Alduin before casting Dragonrend, so my guards with bows weren't actually hurting him. I made him land and my guards kicked his ass, and he complimented me on my strength. I took all the credit because my guards are dead, they don't care. Alduin flew off and I needed to know where he went, how he managed to reach Sovngarde. For that, I would need a dragon. I asked Jarl Balgriff if I could trap one in his house. He said maybe, if I can get Mom and Dad to stop fighting. I went to Mom, she agreed to have a meeting with Dad, who agreed to have a meeting with Mom, and they both met me at High Hrothgar. Mom and Dad decided to stay together for the sake of the children, and I was free to trap that dragon. Odeving told me about Skaldafin and how I must go there on the back of a dragon, or I can't get in. I freed him, he took me there, and I immediately started running. I ran past all the Draugr and only managed to snag myself a small spider in the first load zone. In the second load zone, I ran into a Draugr overlord who had the claw I needed to open the door to the next area, so I had to backtrack and use the environment to my advantage. I equipped a fire spell and made sure to only aim at the oil on the ground, not the Draugr, in order to burn them to death. Once they were dead, I brought them back to fight the overlord. He was far more powerful than them, but I am the most powerful necromancer in the world, so I just raised the Draugr for as many times as I needed until the overlord was dead. I took the claw off his corpse and resurrected him as well. I escaped outside the portal to Sovngarde and jumped in before the dragon priest could remove the staff powering the portal. I didn't expect to be able to bring my Draugr with me into heaven, but I was still sad I didn't see them stumbling around behind me. I wandered through Sovngarde and came upon the Whalebone Bridge to the Hall of Valor. Then came the difficult part, Sun. He guards the bridge and you can only cross if you defeat him in combat. You don't have to kill him, his health just drops halfway. But I'm not supposed to attack things myself, only my horde can. You can't run past him because you'll get struck by lightning on the bridge. The only other way to drain his health without attacking him is to lure him off the waterfall into the abyss. I completely forgot that was an option while playing, so I just took out my spells and fire breath and went at him. I failed the challenge right at the end. Once his health dropped halfway, I entered the Hall of Valor and got Hakon the One-Eyed, Feldir the Old, and Gormlaith Golden Hilt to end what they had started. We cleared the sky, Alduin flew in, I hit him with Dragonrend, and I let three warriors do all the work. They wailed on him each time I brought him to the ground, and I only had to heal them a handful of times. Finally, they got him down to the final blow, and because he's a protected NPC, I was the only one who could do the honors. I had already failed the challenge, so I booped Alduin's snoot and ended it all. I went back to Skyrim, and as a last hurrah, I spawned 40 Imperial soldiers, killed them, and resurrected them to make the largest horde I could without crashing my game. I thought about my victory as I watched my sons fly off into the sunset. Thank you for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. Uh, I hadn't seen anyone do this playthrough yet, so I'm glad I got to do it. I had a lot of fun making this. Um, again, this video was inspired by Mitten Squad, Spiffing Brit, and YMFAH. Uh, thanks again for watching, and have a good one.